بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفي من خلقه وحبيبه اشهد انه قد بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه ومحى الغمه وجاهد في الله حق الجهاد حتى اتاه اليقين فصلاة وسلاما على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من انفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم وعن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا سيد ولد آدم يوم القيامة وأول من يشق عنه القبر وأول شافع وأول مشفع رواه مسلم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد All praise to Allah All praise to Allah The one, the only, the one who should be worshipped I bear witness that he is the creator of this universe And he is the one who should be worshipped I bear witness that Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam Is his messenger True mercy sent to us If you follow his path Inshallah will be in Jannah Amma ba'd Today We will talk about the best creation That Allah gave us The creation that Because of him He guided us to the right path the creation that Allah gave us as a gift from the Quran to guide us and show us how can we live our lives. We were talking about Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam born on Monday. As the hadith said on Abi Qadad radiallahu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam qal su'ila an sawm yawmi ithnayn qal fihi wulidtu wa fihi unzila alay. Then Monday he was born, alayhi salatu wasalam. And not only that, he was born on that day, and this is the day that the Quran was revealed on him. Now comes always, every year, comes the question, 12 Rabi' al-Awwal. Is this the day of his boy birth? I have to tell you, we don't have any proof of that. None, zero. No authenticated hadith that he was born on 12 Rabi' al-Awwal. But we have, and authenticated that he died on that day. He died on 12 Rabi' al-Awwal, a Monday. We have that, but we don't have when he was born. Then really, if you go and celebrate that day, you're celebrating his death. But the question is, the Prophet والسلام, if I ask anyone, what do you know about the Prophet? I'll be surprised. I was in Islamic school and they talked to everyone, on the grade 12 students and I told them talk for two minutes about the prophet and last year as this year I'm telling everyone talk to, the, to me for two minutes about the prophet and they'll give you a prize tell your youth come next week we have still Monday the 12 uh, Monday uh, sorry the his 12th of Rabi'il Awwal is the 19th of October then really if you can bring your youth and talk to me after the khutbah or any time for two minutes about the Prophet, there will be a prize. And I'm not joking about it. Because really we need to tell them how, who is the Prophet. Most of us, if I told them about LeBron James, will know all the information in the world about him. There was even some, some broadcast that saying, what, what's the Prophet name? And wallahi, I heard everything. His name is Muhammad. And then... Nothing after that. They don't know anything about the Prophet. They don't know who is his mother, what's happening to him. This is, this is really a big thing. But we know everything about Messi or, or whatever this player or whatever name is. And he went from this place to that place for that amount of money. We know everything about him. We know how to, for the under 25, play Fortnite and know all the entries and exits. But who is your Prophet? And, okay, you see, huh? We have a prophet? Really? You know. And it's surprise, yes, we have a prophet. And let's take, talk about it quickly. Who is our prophet? First, like I said, he was born on Monday. 
His father died, Abdullah, even he didn't know his wife is pregnant. He went and died. And his mother, Amina, Binti Wahb. And at that time, they used to give the youth to someone to feed him outside Mecca because Mecca was a city and he, they have to give him out. Who is his first uh, feeder? Is Halima al Saadiya. She took him out for two years and then came back to his mother. I said, Keep him one more year. She saw the barakah in everything. And this is myself as a khutbah. How barakah was there when he was less than two years. And after that, she took him and Haditha Shaq al Sadr came. His brother was playing with him and he saw two men came to him, open his heart. And his, mo his mother from breastfeeding, she was got scared. And he returned back to him, to his mother. And his mother told her what happened. And she said, this is the situation. She said, I saw a dream, a ru'ya, that he will be the prophet of this universe. And subhanAllah, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, named him Muhammad. Muhammad wasn't a popular name at that time. Muhammad wasn't a popular name. And subhanAllah, with that being said, in this era, statistically, Muhammad is the most popular name. Statistically, Muhammad is the most popular. And even we have a joke back home, someone went back home and he was searching for Muhammad. <laughs> Laugh. Anyway, Muhammad was so popular these days that everyone is naming himself Muhammad. Then he, when he was six, his mother died and he moved to his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. He stayed with him for two extra years. And Abdul Muttalib was always bringing him forward. Even if there is a space in the Masjid al-Haram, there is no one should be sitting on him except Abdul Muttalib. But his young son, grandson, Muhammad used to go and sit there. And he was approving that. Then he moved to, after when he was eight, he went to his uncle, Abu Talib. And from that time, he stayed with him until he was 14. And Abu Talib took him to a merchant. And he, when his way there, they came across, a, uh, what do you call it? A pre, um, not a priest. A priest is called Bahaira, but the place itself, I forgot the name. Anyway, the, pl the place that the pre uh, priest sit in. And he saw him and he said, take your nephew back home. Take him back home. And he took him back home. When he was 40, he used to like to sit alone. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And when he, when one day he was sitting alone, he found someone there in front of him. And at that time, you know, until today, if imagine you're sitting alone in a room and you find someone in front of you, you panic. <laughs> Whoever you are, you all panic. I'm, I'm, I'm just honest with myself. Imagine that you're sitting in your bedroom and you see someone in front of you. Yeah, immediately. Panic. How did he come in? And not only that, he holds him and he said, read. And the Prophet cannot read. And he said, والسلام, I cannot read. And he hugged him. Imagine someone is hugging you. Hug. Hug. Strong man. Hug you. And he released him and he said, read. I believe this is the way it is. Read in a higher tone of voice. And the Prophet they read, cannot read. He said, I don't read. And now again for the third time, for the second time he hold him and the Prophet couldn't breathe and said, let him go. I said, read. The Prophet for the third time, he said, I cannot read. And the man, this hugged him hard until the Prophet said, my breath was almost gonna die. And he released him, I said, read. And now the Prophet hold back. He said, what do you want me to read? Now, I'll take uh, something outside of that. If you know someone and you try to ask him for a favor, ask him three times. One, two, three. And the third time, don't repeat it. From that, don't repeat it anymore. Because you shouldn't be. If he said, told you he cannot do it, he cannot do it. Let's complete the story. When he released him the third time, and the, surat, the first thing, Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika allabi khalaq. خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم and that's it and he vanished 
Where do you go? He's sitting, if you, anyone goes to Ghar Hira, it's a Hira, it's above uh, almost a hill. You can see Mecca from there. Where do you go? And the Prophet really panicked. He ran away towards his home. And when he was going to his home, Sayyidina Jibreel came to him in his physical way, in normal way. He saw Sayyidina Jibreel up the sky, blocking everywhere. The Prophet looks everywhere and he couldn't see him, see except Sayyidina Jibreel. And he said, Ya Muhammad, inna ka Rasulullah. And the Prophet Isa froze in his, in his place until, you know, the panic went away and he ran toward the Khadija, his first wife. Imagine you coming home panicking to your wife. What are you going to do? What's your wife will tell you? Where have you been? What did you do? Why do you panic, right? You see that? But no, Khadija said, calm down. And she covered him. Sleep. That's why you're mudathir. Sit. Sleep. Relax. What's until she, he, he calmed him down. I said, what, where was the problem? And he, he told her what happened. I said, okay. Look, the first faqih in Islam, most of the scholars said, was said, Ummana Khadija, our mother Khadija, the first faqiha in Islam. Why? She said, in Allah la yukhzik Allahu abad. Allah will never let you go. Why? Because, inna ka rahim. First thing, inna ka, you connect to your womb. Who connects to his parents and family? If you have a catastrophe, this is will happen. Allah will support you. You remember the seventh bridge? This is the seventh bridge. Remember the womb, the, the rahim. And she go, told him a whole story and she said, come with me, let's go to Waraka, Ibn Awfal. He's a knowledgeable person. With that, always if you have a question, try to find a knowledgeable person. If you have a problem, pain in your body, you don't go to an engineer to tell him, I have a pain in the body, what can I do? Or you go to a brother who is expert in photography and say, oh, what do you think in my body? What do you, who do you go? To a doctor. Now the same thing, go to the expert of this field, try to find the right one. And what happened? She went to Waraka. And when he, when he, when he told him what happened, he, he told him, that you are the Prophet. I hope that I was young to support you. That's why the Prophet saw him in Jannah. Because he was the first one who came even though Islam wasn't revealed yet. Then the Prophet start conveying the message to his family one by one. And after three years he went to Mecca ahead of one of the, uh, one of the mountains of Mecca and start yelling, I am the Prophet. I'm running quickly now because in each part I can stay for a, not khutbah for a whole day. And then after that, he stayed in Mecca for 13 years. He saw everything, everything hard on him. His wife died when he, after 10 years of dawah. 10 years, he was 50 when his wife died. Someone's telling us, the Prophet likes to get married. Okay, he was 50 when his wife died. He could have married at that time or before. He stayed five years. He didn't marry anyone. He went to Medina after that when he was 50. Oh, I missed something. And when he was 50, when his wife died and his uncle died, the two support as Allah is sending him a message. If the support of the dunya is gone, the support of the akhirah is there. And he took him, you know, when you, you are so stressed out, so depressed, a world, you see it dark, what your friend comes in, let's go and have some fun. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to, to, to show you something. Allah took him to a trip. One of the best trips in the world. He took him from Mecca to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Unul Buraq. That's why if anyone disbelieves that a prophet went from Masjid Al-Aqsa to Al-Masjid Al-Haram, Masjid Al-Aqsa, the ulama said he's out of Islam. Because it's in the Quran. Subhanallahi asra bi abidihi laylam min al masjid al haram ya al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawla. Then really you cannot dispute that or you're disputing the ayat of the Quran. And now he went from, Mag from al masjid al aqsa to the heavens until he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there, what happened there? Salah came down on him. Five times. Look at that. Imagine that you want to deliver a message 
Imagine a king want to deliver a message. What happens? It's not that important. He sends him a text message. It's a more, more important message. Secretary, call this person and tell him that. More important message, he sent a minister. More important message, bring him in. I want him. This is a very important message. What is that message? Allah brought Rasulullah to his place. To Sidrat al Muntaha. To reveal him prayer. That's why men, you don't have any excuse if you don't pray. Because prayer is in. Allah gave him in the higher status, subhanAllah. Then he came down. Our story again, inshallah we'll talk about it. And then it came the wars and bayat al-aqab al-ula and thaniya. Sorry, uh, yes. And then he went the prophet after that when he was 53 to Medina. And he stayed that for 10 years. In the sixth year was Sulh al-Hudaybiyya. After six years, the prophet was how, how old now? 59. The Prophet went to Sultan Hudaybiyah and then Fath Makkah when he was 60, Mecca was open. And subhanAllah, the Prophet died, alayhi salatu wasalam. But before he died, what happened? This is what I'm gonna talk about, inshaAllah, in the second part of the khutbah. Aqulu khawli hadha wa astaghfiru alaykum fa astaghfiru ya fasa mustaghfiru. Allahumma aghfiru hadha wa Allahumma arhamna Allahumma adhi Allahumma arhamna Allahumma arhamna Allahumma إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفر ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما بعد. When he was dying, the prophet said, الصلاة, the last thing before he imagined that you're gonna die. What's the last thing you wanna say? Oh, my money, you're leaving. My kids, no. What's the most important? The prophet said, الصلاة, الصلاة, استوصوا بالصلاة, then استوصوا بالنساء. And women, because the women are the one who bring us, bring us up. All the men, you're coming from a father, from a mother or a sister or a daughter to support you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He described the Prophet, imagine someone is describing you. If one someone gonna describe me, He would say, "You know the Khatib with a loud voice. I'm known by a loud voice. I have no problem. Good. Hopefully, I'm not offending anyone. Allah may Allah forgive me. But." What the Prophet, oh, sorry, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the best description of the Prophet. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ This is the best description. Then if you want to follow the Prophet footsteps, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? You be on the khuluq. Try to achieve. That's why ذَهَبَ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقُ بِالْأَجْرِ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقُ took everything. And there is another hadith that if you want to buy a house in Jannah in the lower part, أنا زعيم بيت في رباد الجنة لمن ترك الكذب لو كان لمرأة لو كان محقة وزعيم بيت في وسط الجنة لمن ترك الكذب لو كان مازحة وزعيم بيت في أعلى الجنة لمن حسن خلقه. I am guaranteeing someone if in the lower part of جنة if you take the 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 not the discussion the discussion without any purpose. Some people you keep on discussing discussing and you're not going anywhere. You stop the discussion. Allah, a prophet said that you have a house in lower part of Jannah. And the middle of Jannah, لِمَنْ تَرَقَ الْكَذِبَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مَذِحَا April Fools, it's coming. April, oh, let's take out of April Fools, a lie. No, even if you're lying, stop. A prophet guarantees the house in the middle part of Jannah. If you want the house in the middle of Jannah, stop the lying. And if you want the higher part of Jannah, what? If you have to be, have good morals. Now you, you need to know who is the Prophet One last thing I have to talk about. A khatib one day was standing in Egypt. It's a true story. And he's talking about the king, King Fuad at that time. He was King Ta Hussein, he was a blind person. And the man said about the king, he want to show off to Hana. The king. ما عبس وما تولى. When Ta Hussein came, he didn't didn't frown. He didn't frown, and he didn't move away. And who was there? Sheikh Mahmoud Shakir. Who is Mahmoud Shakir? He was the deputy of Al Azhar. After the prayer, he stood up in front of everyone, and he said, "Everyone, repeat your prayer. Pray al-Zuhr. Everyone in the mosque, pray al-Zuhr." 
لقد كفر إمامكم your خطيب is a kafir why because تعرض لرسول الله تعرض only he said that the man said that the pro the the man this king مات مات ما عبسه ما توال he didn't frown or he didn't even go away because Taha Hussein was here what did he's aiming for the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام when he met عبد الله بن أم مكتوم عبسه وتوال he frowned he want to give him some time even when you talk about the Prophet behave and make sure that you can come out of this religion immediately. Because you talk, when you talk about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, but behave. Make sure that you are good when you talk about him. Because easily we can leave religion because of that. Someone will say, really? Yeah, really, really. We can imagine that you go to the president of Korea, Korea, North Korea, and you talk about him bad. What happened to you? I think you will not even finish the statement. I'm not saying that the prophet is like that, but I'm saying that we have to behave. We have to behave when you talk about the prophet who guides you. I'll finish with the story of Sayyidina Umar. When he was talking about the prophet, and the prophet, لا يكمل إيمان أحدكم. The one who will not, his iman will not be complete until I, Allah and his messenger is the most beloved to him. And Sayyidina Umar answered the question that Allah, I was going to ask. He said, yes, ya O Prophet, you are better to me than my family, my money, but myself? Myself? No. Give me a minute. And the Prophet again repeated the statement. لا يكمل إيمان أحدكم. Your iman will not be perfect until you love the Prophet more than you love your family, your money, and yourself. And I said, no, Omar said, hold. I have to think about it. Give me a second. He moved away. And who is narrating the hadith? Abdullah, his son. And he went back to the Prophet. Oh, Prophet, I love you more than I love myself. And Abdullah ibn Omar asked his father, why? Why did you change? And uh, he said, the Prophet is guiding me to Jannah. My nafs will take me to the hellfire. Everyone was, why to pray, what to do this? Why the, the Prophet is more valuable to me. If he is more valuable to you, what do you know about him? That's the challenge. Everyone is here. I'll put the challenge which I put in the beginning. If you talk to me after the khutbah for two minutes, for two minutes about the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, I'll give you a reward. I'm not joking about it. Please come, inshallah, from today until 19th of October, which is the day the Prophet died, 12th of Rabi'ah al-Awwal. That's the day of the, he died, alayhi salatu wasalam. Lastly but not least, remember, we have Dar al-Quran here. If you want to your youth to learn about the Prophet and learn about the Quran, remember, talk to your family about the Prophet. Talk to them in a way that they know him more. Allahum Mahdina Fiman Hadait. Allahum Mahdina Fiman Hadait. Wa Fina Fiman Afait. Allahum Majmana Wala to Farikna. Allahum Makhfilana Wali Walidina. Allahum Hikna bin Abiy Kama Amanna Bihi Walam Nara. Allahum Hikna bin Abiy Kama Amanna Bihi Walam Nara. Allahum Hikna bin Abiy Kama Amanna Bihi Walam Nara. Allahum Makhfilana Dunubana. Wa Isra Fana Fi Amrina. Wa Fana Salahin. Wa Akhiru Dawana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa Kumu Ila Salatikum Alhamdulillah. Wa Akhim Salah.